Hello everybody and welcome to Books with Ike. My name is Isaac and today I'm going to be going over my 5 star predictions. Now, I have tried to film this video once before, but it was totally out of focus, so I'm re-filming it. But since then, I have read one of the books on my 5 star predictions list, and started another one. But I'll cover what those are when I get to them. And I do have other books that I think might be 5 stars, but these are the ones that I'm, like, solidly convinced of. Now, I have 16 books to talk about, so without further ado, I'm just going to get on into them. And the first two books I want to talk about aren't actually out yet. And the first of those is The Tower of Nero by Rick Riordan slash Riordan, which is the fifth and final book in the Trials of Apollo series. And if you didn't know, The Trials of Apollo is part of the Percy Jackson universe, and it follows the god Apollo, who is stripped of his powers and banished to Earth by Zeus, and has to prove himself worthy of becoming a god again. And I think this will be five stars because I love Rick Riordan's books, and I've been really loving The Trials of Apollo itself, especially the character development for Apollo, and I believe this book will be the culmination of that development. And I have my own theories about how the series is going to end, and I'm intrigued to see if I'm right. And I know a lot of people don't really like Rick Riordan's finales, generally, but I really like them, so there's precedent for me loving his finales. And I doubt that The Trials of Apollo will be any exception. And the other book I want to talk about which hasn't been released yet might not even be released this year, and that is The Winds of Winter by George R. R. Martin, which is the sixth-ish book in A Song of Ice and Fire, depending on where you live. And if you didn't know somehow, A Song of Ice and Fire is what Game of Thrones is based on, and it's about a bunch of families fighting for control over the kingdom of Westeros, unaware of the threat of a horde of ice zombies which is going to wipe them all out. And I think I'll give this five stars because I've given every other book in the series five stars, and I think for the most part, the series only gets stronger as it goes along, and I'm sure that no matter what happens in The Winds of Winter, George R.R. R. Martin will find a way to make me love it. And the first book that I actually own that I have to talk about is A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms by George R.R. R. Martin. And this is a bind-up of the first three novellas in The Tales of Duncan Egg, which is a prequel series to A Song of Ice and Fire about Sir Duncan the Tall, and Egg, who is Aegon the Unlikely. And I think this will be five stars because I love George R. R. Martin's writing, I think his characters and plots are incredible, and I'm sure this will be no different. The next book I have to talk about is The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman, and this is the third and final book in the His Dark Materials trilogy. And I'm sure I don't need to explain what His Dark Materials is about, but if you don't know, it's set in a world where the human soul takes on the form of an animal called a demon. And it follows a girl who has to rescue her kidnapped best friend, and it is an indictment of organised religion. Now, I've read the first His Dark Materials book, and I enjoyed it, but didn't love it. And people say that the sequels are very love them or hate them and I think I'll fall on the side of loving them, because I've heard these last two books get weird, and I like weird fantasy, and I like the sort of metaphysical weirdness, and I like commentaries on religion, and I don't expect Pullman to disappoint me. Next I have Magic's Price by Mercedes Lackey, and this is the third and final book in the Valdemar The Last Herald Mage trilogy, which is part of the overall Valdemar world. And the first book, Magic's Pawn, is about a boy called Vaniel, who is the son of a lord, who is kicked out of his house for failing to live up to his father's standards of masculinity. And he is sent to stay with his aunt Seville, who his father hopes will be able to straighten him out. Can you tell what I mean by that? Now, I have already read this book, but I'm going to talk about it as if I haven't. So, I thought this would be five stars because I loved the first book, and I enjoyed the second book, and I expected this to be better than them both because it's a finale, and finales generally do that. 
and I loved Vaniel's character, and I loved the world, and the story was interesting, and I thought there was pretty much no way this could fail to live up to those expectations. But if you want to know what I ended up actually thinking about it, you'll have to wait for my next Books I Read Recently video, which will be my April and May wrap-up, or you can just check my Goodreads. Oh, and this has nothing to do with the quality of the book, but I think this cover is absolutely beautiful. I know a lot of people don't like this sort of 80s, 90s style fantasy book cover art, but I really love it. And the last sequel I have to talk about is The King of Crows by Libba Bray, and this is the fourth and final book in the Diviners series, which is a YA, Prohibition-era, supernatural horror story, slash urban fantasy, about people with strange abilities. And I read The Diviners last year and really enjoyed it, but didn't love it. But I really think the series has the potential to become one of my favourites, and from the way people talk about the later books in the series, I fully expect to love them, and I think this will be a great finale. And the rest of the books I have to talk about are the starts of new series or standalones. And the first of those is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. As you can see, I have started reading this one. I'm about 130 pages in. And this is about a boy who is the bastard son of a prince. And his mother's peasant family gets tired of raising him, so they bring him to the royal family, and that ends up causing the boy's father to abdicate the throne and leave. And the king decides to make use of the boy by training him as an assassin. And I thought this would be five stars because I've heard nothing but incredible things about Robin Hobb's work, and it's one of the most acclaimed fantasy series of all time, and I expect it to live up to that hype, honestly. And that's really the only reason. And I'll talk about what I actually thought of this book in my next wrap-up. The next book I have to talk about is Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asimon. And this is a historical romance set in 80s Italy, about a boy called Elio who starts to fall for a man who is a student of his father who is staying with them. And I think this will be five stars because I loved the movie. I even loved it so much that I got the movie cover for the book, which I don't do normally. But yeah, I thought it was a really beautiful movie, but a lot of that was down to the acting and the directing and the cinematography and the soundtrack. So I'm interested to experience the story in a different medium and see how it compares. Next I have Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. And this is a fantasy story about a librarian called Laszlo Strange, who is obsessed with the lost city of Weep. And everyone else believes the Weep is a myth, but Laszlo is the only one who believes it really existed. And so when he gets the chance to go to Weep, he jumps at the opportunity. And I think this will be five stars because it sounds like the sort of fantastical, whimsical, strange, mysterious, ethereal fantasy that I really love. And I read one of Lainey Taylor's other books, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, and I know that her writing style is incredible and lyrical and just gorgeous, which really suits a story like this. So I really expect to love it. And the next book I have to talk about is the Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. Now, I made this list before I learned about the controversy surrounding Mackenzie Lee, and I still intend to read this, and I still expect to enjoy it, but I don't think I will ever pay for another of Mackenzie Lee's books. With that out of the way, let's talk about the actual book. So this is a YA historical romance about a hedonistic noble heir called Monty, who has a crush on his best friend Percy, and they have a European adventure, and that's all I know about it. And I think this will be five stars because I've heard nothing but great things about it, and this sort of swashbuckling romance sounds right up my alley. Next I have I Hope You Get This Message by Farah Nasrishi, and this is about a group of teenagers with serious problems and how they react to the threat of an alien apocalypse. And I think this will be five stars because it's been compared to We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson, which is one of my favourite books ever, and it has very similar vibes. It's like a 
heavy contemporary story, but with a sci-fi twist and an alien apocalypse, which both of these have. And I've really enjoyed, like, everything I've read from this sort of, I don't know, genre of these sort of heavy, deep contemporary stories, but with a, a bit of a sci-fi twist on them. And the next book I have is More Than This by Patrick Ness. And this is about a boy who dies and then wakes up in a strange afterlife. And that's all I need to completely sell me on it. Because like I said, I really enjoy this sort of metaphysical weird fantasy. And it's by Patrick Ness. And I've loved every book I've read by Patrick Ness. And I expect that he will do no wrong. <laughs> and next I have... The Chimes by Anna Smile, or Smale, or Small, one of those. And this is an adult urban fantasy set in a London which is dominated by a large instrument which destroys memories. And then the protagonist Simon starts to get his memories back. And I believe it is also an MM romance. And I think this will be five stars because, again, it sounds like the sort of weird surreal fantasy that I really love. And I think it will be deep and meaningful and lyrical and poetic, and there's nothing else that I want from a book. Next I have Senlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft, and this is the first book in the Books of Babel series. And this is about a man called Thomas Senlin, who goes on a honeymoon with his wife to the Tower of Babel. I don't think it means the biblical Tower of Babel, but I could be wrong. But when they get to the tower, he gets separated from his wife, and he decides he needs to climb the tower to find her. But each level of the tower is like its own self-contained kingdom, with all the different customs and expectations and rules. And that's why I think it will be five stars, because a tower where every different level is like a different world is just such an intriguing and interesting and unique idea. And as I said before, it's the sort of weird, surreal fantasy that I love. Next I have... The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. And I don't know much about this, all I really know about it is that it is a standalone epic fantasy which is a feminist retelling of George and the Dragon, and it has a central FF romance. And since I don't know much about it, you're probably wondering why it's a five-star prediction. And... that's why. This is why. <laughs> because it's a standalone epic fantasy, it's this long, it's about dragons, it's very queer. And I've listened to an interview with Samantha Shannon and she's really articulate and intelligent and she makes it sound incredible. And I really want to read it. Like, length, subject matter, dragons. There's no way this won't be amazing. And if I'm forced to eat my words on that, I'll be very disappointed. And finally, my last five-star prediction is Reverie by Ryan LaSala. And this is about a boy called Cain, who is found washed up in a river with no memories, and the magic is based on surreal dreamscapes, and that's all I know about it, other than that it's also really gay. And those are the reasons that it's a five-star prediction, honestly. It's surreal fantasy, which we've already established is my favourite kind of thing. It's supremely gay. There's just no way I can't love supremely gay dream magic. So yeah, those were all of my five-star predictions for the foreseeable future. If you've read any of these books, I'd love to hear what you thought about them, so please leave that in the comments. And also tell me what are some of your five-star predictions. Or, failing that, just what are some books that you're looking forward to that you think you'll love. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. You can follow me on Twitter or add me as a friend on Goodreads if you feel like it, links to both of those in the description, and I will hopefully have another video up soon. But until then, thank you for watching. I have been Isaac and this has been Books with Ike. Goodbye.